Hello once again, welcome to Teacher Will's tutorial. In this video, we are going to study the topic, Exogenic Processes. A topic covered in Earth and Life Science. So come and join me once again. Let us explore our topic for today. Our Earth is a dynamic body. It is constantly changing. This can be manifested by the change in the surface of Earth. It is continuously affected by forces that causes changes within Earth, called endogenous or endogenic process and above the surface, called exogenic process. The exogenic process. Exogenic process or external processes, originate externally to the Earth's surface. It is a part of the rock cycle. They are responsible for the transforming rock into sediment. Exogenic process include degradation processes that includes weathering, mass wasting, erosion and transportation and the aggradation process which includes the deposition. In geology, degradation refers to the lowering of a fluvial surface, such as a stream bed or floodplain, through erosional processes. Degradation is characteristic of channel networks in which either bedrock erosion is taking place, or in systems that are sediment starved and are therefore entraining more material than they are depositing. When a stream degrades, it leaves behind a fluvial terrace. One of the exogenic processes is the process of weathering. Weathering is the action of elements of weather and climate over earth material. Weathering describes the breaking down or dissolving of rocks and minerals on the surface of the earth. It is a degradation process and does not involve movement of materials. It can be defined mechanical disintegration and chemical decomposition of rocks through the actions of various elements of weather and climate. When rocks undergo weathering, some minerals are removed through chemical, physical leaching by ground water and thereby the concentration of remaining, valuable, minerals increase. There are two types of weathering. We have mechanical weathering or also known as physical weathering. And we have the chemical weathering. The mechanical weathering or physical weathering, mechanical weathering or disintegration is the breaking up of large rocks into smaller fragments without a change in its composition. Breakdown would mean that the rock is fractured, cracked or fragmented into smaller pieces. So here are the processes that can cause mechanical weathering. We have, 1. Thermal and pressure change which is also known as, insulation weathering. 2. Winds and waves, 3. Freeze and thaw. And we have 4. Organic activity. The thermal and pressure change. Rocks crumble and break into fragments because they are subjected to alternating hot and cold temperatures many times. During the day, the sun heats the rocks. When a rock gets hot, it expands. That means there is an increase in volume, while at night, to gets cold causing contraction which is there will be a decrease in volume. Repeated swings in temperature weaken the rock and in the process, mineral grains are loosened from the rocks and eventually the rocks break down into pieces. Best examples are the stones in an arid desert that slowly turn to sand. The rates of expansion and contraction of the outer and inner part of the rock differ. The outer part expands and contracts much more than the inner part because it is directly exposed to the heat of the sun. This unequal change in volume between the inner and outer part of the rock causes rock to crack which starts with the peeling off of the outside surface of the rock. The process of peeling off, is called exfoliation. Next we have wind and waves. Wind and waves can all cause physical weathering. Tiny grains of sand are picked up and carried off by the wind, which are then blasted on the surface of rocks, smoothening them. This could wear away the rock and weather it. On the seashore, the action of waves chips away and cracks the rocks. Number 3. The freeze and thaw. You know that if you put a glass in the freezer it will soon break. This is because water expands when it freezes. Similarly, when water collects in the rock pores and slits, it expands when it freezes. Freeze-thaw weathering is a process of erosion that happens in cold areas where ice forms. A crack in a rock can fill with water which then freezes as the temperature drops. As the ice expands, it pushes the crack apart, making it larger. When the temperature rises again, the ice melts, and the water fills the newer parts of the crack. The water freezes again as the temperature falls, and the expansion of the ice causes further expansion to the crack. This process continues until the rock breaks. Number 3. The freeze and thaw. You know that if you put a glass in the freezer it will soon break. This is because water expands when it freezes. Similarly, when water collects in the rock pores and slits, it expands when it freezes. Freeze-thaw weathering is a process of erosion that happens in cold areas where ice forms. 
A crack in a rock can fill with water which then freezes as the temperature drops. As the ice expands, it pushes the crack apart, making it larger. When the temperature rises again, the ice melts, and the water fills the newer parts of the crack. The water freezes again as the temperature falls, and the expansion of the ice causes further expansion to the crack. This process continues until the rock breaks. Number 3. The freeze and thaw. You know that if you put a glass in the freezer it will soon break. This is because water expands when it freezes. Similarly, when water collects in the rock pores and slits, it expands when it freezes. Freeze-thaw weathering is a process of erosion that happens in cold areas where ice forms. A crack in a rock can fill with water which then freezes as the temperature drops. As the ice expands, it pushes the crack apart, making it larger. When the temperature rises again, the ice melts, and the water fills the newer parts of the crack. The water freezes again as the temperature falls, and the expansion of the ice causes further expansion to the crack. This process continues until the rock breaks. The organic activity. Animals and plants also take a heavy toll on rocks causes them to wear away. For example, there are animals that dig holes on the ground and exposed rocks. It could also be an animal like a rabbit that burrows into a crack in the rock as it constantly burrows and makes the cracks bigger, and it ends up ripping the rocks apart. Moreover, anthropogenic activities become the primary cause of weathering like road construction, mining or even a simple walking. Essentially, weeds and plant roots can grow in cracks. As the plant grows bigger, the roots also grow bigger and tend to push open the cracks, making them wider and deeper. Eventually, the rock is fractured. The second type of weathering is the chemical weathering. Chemical weathering, involves the direct effect of atmospheric chemicals or biologically produced chemicals also known as biological weathering in the breakdown of rocks, soils and minerals. That means, chemical weathering decomposes rocks through chemical change. The processes involved in chemical weathering include the following. We have, 1. Oxidation, 2. Hydrolysis or hydration, 3. Carbonation, and 4. Biological action. The oxidation. The oxidation is a chemical weathering process occurs when oxygen, considered as an active gas, combines with another substance like minerals in rocks, yielding compounds called oxides. Iron, aluminum, copper and sodium are examples of minerals that readily react with oxygen which then form mineral oxides. Rust for example, is iron oxide. When rocks particularly those containing iron are exposed to air and water, the iron undergoes oxidation. Once a mineral is oxidized, it becomes pudgy and shows discoloration. This weakens the rock and makes it crumble. The hydrolysis or hydration. Usually hydrolysis or hydration is a chemical process in which a molecule of water is added to a substance. Sometimes this addition causes both substance and water molecule to split into two parts. In such reactions, one fragment of the target molecule, or parent molecule, gains a hydrogen ion. It breaks a chemical bond in the compound. A common kind of hydrolysis occurs when a salt of a weak acid or weak base, or both, is dissolved in water. Water spontaneously ionizes into hydroxide anions and hydronium cations. The salt also dissociates into its constituent anions and cations. For example, sodium acetate dissociates in water into sodium and acetate ions. Sodium ions react very little with the hydroxide ions whereas the acetate ions combine with hydronium ions to produce acetic acid. In this case the net result is a relative excess of hydroxide ions, yielding a basic solution. The carbonation. Carbonation is the reaction of carbonate and bicarbonate with minerals and is common process helping to break down of feldspar and carbonate minerals. Carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and soil air is absorbed by water to form carbonic acid that acts as a weak acid. Calcium carbonates and magnesium carbonates are dissolved in carbonic acid and are removed in a solution without leaving any residue resulting in cave formation. The biological action. Some plants and animals may create chemical weathering by releasing chelating and autifying compounds that react with some minerals in rocks. Decaying remains of dead plants in soil may form organic acids and, when dissolved in water, may cause chemical weathering. The next type of exogenic process is the mass wasting. In your travel to from your home to school or other places, have you noticed a downward movement of rocks, soil and regolith or, rock and mineral fragments from weathering from slopes? 
The mass movement of rocks, soil and regolith is often referred to as mass wasting. It is the step that follows the weathering and is also a degradation process. The driving force of mass wasting is gravity. Although gravity is the controlling force, there are factors that influence or trigger the down-slope movement of materials with water, such as over-steepening of slopes beyond the angle of repose, removal of anchoring vegetation, and ground vibration from earthquakes. Next is the erosion. Erosion involves the movement of the weathered rock, now soil, sand and pebbles from their site of weathering by the agents of erosion such as wind, moving water, ice and gravity. Erosion is a process of transporting weathered sediments by agents of erosion to different places. Weathering does not always occur before erosion. Erosion always follows after the weathering. Running water is the primary agent of erosion on Earth. The transportation. Transport makes erosion complete because it involves the movement of the eroded materials and sediments. Weathering can continue during transport. Materials are transported in four distinct ways as solution, wherein materials are described in water and carried along by water. As a suspension, wherein the suspended particles are carried by a medium such as, air, water, or ice. As traction, gear, particles move by rolling, sliding, and shuffling along eroded surface. These movements occur in all erosional agents. And saltation, where particles move from the surface to the medium in quick repeated cycle. The repeated cycle has enough force to detach new particles. There are factors that affect the transportation of particles. These include particle weight, size, shape, surface configuration, medium type, resistance of particles to cohesions, and other environmental factors. For example, for wind, transport velocity can be affected by variation in spatial heating and cooling, which create pressure gradient. In stream, the transport of sediments is influenced by slope, discharge, and channel shape. And finally we have the deposition. Deposition is the geological process in which sediments, soil and rocks are added to a landform or land mass. Wind, ice, water, and gravity transport previously weathered surface material, which, at the loss of enough kinetic energy in the fluid, is deposited, building up layers of sediment. Deposition occurs when the forces responsible for sediment transportation are no longer sufficient to overcome the forces of gravity and friction, creating a resistance to motion, this is known as the null point hypothesis. Deposition can also refer to the buildup of sediment from organically derived matter or chemical processes. For example, chalk is made up partly of the microscopic calcium carbonate skeletons of marine plankton, the deposition of which has induced chemical processes diagenesis, to deposit further calcium carbonate. Similarly, the formation of coal begins with the deposition of organic material, mainly from plants, in anaerobic conditions. And that concludes our lesson for today. I hope you learned to our tutorial series. More educational videos will be uploaded. So don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell for more video updates. See you again on the next video. Thank you very much. Good day and God bless you all.